Namaste and welcome to the next series of book two of uh, Yoga Vasishta. I'm really happy to start this new series uh, because we're going to start by talking about the structure and the architecture of Yoga Vasishta. This is very important to know because as you will see, it actually links with our esoteric teaching concept, which is, after all, the root structure of the absolute truth. So let's take a look at the seven books of Yoga Vasishta. The first book we've already been through, Vairagya Kanda, is based on the theme of detachment. The subject is human suffering, the human condition. It has 33 chapters, 1,500 shlokas, or Sanskrit verses. Book two, the Mumukshu Kanda, is about the aspirant. Mumukshu means one who would attain moksha, or enlightenment. And really the subject is initiation or the beginning of sadhana. It only has 20 chapters and 1,000 shlokas, and it's the shortest book, as you will see. The third book is called Utpatti Khanda, and that's about creation. And the subject is the fall into material existence. It has 122 chapters and 7,000 shlokas, it's quite extensive and a very detailed view of the subject. Then book four, Stiti Khanda, is about existence. And the subject here is Karma Yoga. It has 62 chapters and 3,000 shlokas. Book five is called Upashanti Khanda, or dissolution of the material existence. And its subject is Ananya Bhakti. We talked about Ananya Bhakti in a recent series. It has 93 chapters and 5,000 shlokas. Book 6a is called Nirvana Khanda. And its theme is liberation. Its subject is Raja Yoga or meditation. It has 128 chapters and 6,000 shlokas. And finally, book 6b, which I think should really be book 7, but who am I to argue, <laughs> is about the final ultimate goal of self-realization and jnana yoga. It's the longest in the book with 216 chapters and 8,500 shlokas for a total of 24,000 shlokas. Now, we're not going to be going through every single shloka, or we'd be here for another 20 years. <laughs> but what we will do is focus in on the most significant instructions and go into them in detail. And the long narrations and stories we're going to skip over but we're going to provide you with the download so that you can read them on your own. Another way to look at Yoga Vasishta is as a pyramid of ascending topics or subjects. Here, the Vairagya Khanda is the foundation, the base, and the Mumukshu Khanda, dealing with the aspirant, one who is to attain moksha, is built on top of that. So without first realizing detachment, one cannot really become an aspirant, a mamukshu, or a sadhu. Then there is creation, how the material world is made, how the trap is created, and also the actions one must perform to prepare for the actual sadhana or spiritual path. Stiti Khanda is about existence and the worship of God, 
which brings one's attention to the absolute consciousness. Upashanti Khanda is about dissolution, winding up the material creation and winding up the life of illusion prior to actual liberation. Nirvana Khanda is about that liberation and how it is attained. And finally, Uttaradha Bhaga, the second half of the sixth book, which is really the seventh book, I suppose, <laughs> is about the ultimate goal, the ultimate goodness, the best thing that we can hope for, self-realization, which is beyond even liberation. Now, the point here why I made this figure like a pyramid is that each subject is a prerequisite for the next. Unless you really get the prior books, you cannot really implement or realize the following books. So it's very important if you're going through this series, not to begin in the middle or skip ahead, but to begin from the beginning and thoroughly understand the topic and realize it for yourself before going on. Okay, this is really true of all of our series. If you really want to... <laughs> get it. You should go back to the beginning and go through all of them. But of course, that would be a full-time job, so probably nobody's going to do it. But those of you who've been following for a while, you know this is true. Each one of our series builds on the ones before it. So you need that background to really get it. Now let's take a look at the book as a whole and the size of each book within it. Yoga Vasishta has six, well, actually seven books. <laughs> but the book one that we just finished is only 5% of the total. Book two is even smaller, 3%. And then the other books, as you can see from the figure, are a little bit bigger. But really, book six, and what I'm going to start calling book seven, because why not? are almost half of the total. So we can understand that the actual uh, core is the final book, making it all the more important to go through the previous books and be well grounded in them before attempting the final book six and book seven. Now let's take another look at the architecture in relation to the esoteric teaching. Now, of course, as uh, followers and fans of the esoteric teaching channel, you have gone through the introduction series, right? <laughs> of course. So I'm going to assume that you're familiar with it and not define any of these terms because that's done in the introduction to esoteric teaching series which, of course, you have watched, right? <laughs> anyway, the esoteric teaching begins from the idea of yin and yang. That yin is known as the fall, and yang, the path. The yin is the dark force, and yang is the light force. So, in the fall, the beings enter into darkness of material existence. And on the path, they get liberation from it. So all these steps are included in ordinary life, material life, which only leads to death. And then the other steps of the path are included in spiritual life, which leads to ultimate self-realization. Now the steps of the fall are gestation, birth, growth, sex, work, decay, and finally, death. We've gone over all of these in detail previously, so I'm not going to go into them again. But you can see this is the actual uh, life pattern of most beings in the material world. And after death, they simply go back to gestation and start all over again. Except for those who are interested in self-realization. For them, 
the next stage is instruction, then initiation, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and jnana yoga, leading to self-realization or liberation from material existence. Now, what does this have to do with yoga vasishta? Well, let's take a look. First, let's move the arrows out of the way so we have some room to scribble. Now, the first book of Yoga Vasishta, as we know already so well, deals with the problems of material life. So these are decay and death, and they are discussed very deeply by Rama in his long monologue in Book 1. Book 2 deals with the Mamukshu, the candidate for liberation. So it deals with instruction and initiation. That's what's covered in Book 2. How do you become a sadhu? How do you get on the path? Now, Book 3 deals with the fall. How does the material creation take place? And in parallel with it, how does the process of taking a body and manifesting in the material world take place for the individual being. So assuming that we do not want to simply go through decay and death leading to rebirth, but we want to get out of the material world, and we take the instruction and initiation of Book 2 to heart, the next stage is Karma Yoga, which is discussed in Book 4, Bhakti in Book 5, Raja Yoga in Book 6a, and finally Jnana Yoga leading to self-realization in Book 6b or Book 7, whatever you want to call it. So you see, there is actually a perfect synchronicity between our structure, our conceptual framework of the absolute truth, the esoteric teaching, and yoga vasishta, because after all, they're talking about the same thing. Simply, in the esoteric teaching, we are giving an abstract structure, a conceptual framework for you to hold on to and to put these different teachings in context. But in yoga vasishta, it will go into detail tremendous detail on every single one of these. And that will give you enough information to actually attain moksha for yourself. This is the goal of Yoga Vasishta and the esoteric teaching. So they go together perfectly. Now, before anybody raises a question about this, no, the, the books four, five, six, and seven <laughs> Don't specifically, explicitly talk about karma yoga, bhakti yoga, and so on. But they occupy the same stage of the path in the esoteric teaching. And while there isn't an exact correspondence, they pretty much match because the whole teaching is given in every book but simply it's given from a different point of view. The point of view of karma yoga, the point of view of bhakti yoga, and so on. So anyway, the esoteric teaching and yoga vasishta aim for the same result. And I promise you, if you hear them nicely and consider them well and practice them thoroughly, you will attain release from material existence. Om Tat Sat. Om Aharihi Om. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinal Gum Arunachala Shivam Yidam